Hello everyone, thank you for tuning into our video. In this video, we will look at the Multiphase Synchronous Buck Converter demo model. This Plex demo model shows a configurable multiphase synchronous buck converter with a load step. Of note, the model uses a dynamic subsystem mask and vectorized power stage to implement and appropriately display a user-specified number of paralleled buck converter phases. Also known as an interleaved buck converter, the multiphase synchronous buck converter topology deploys a set of parallel buck power stages that are individually referred to as a phase. Each has its own pair of switches and an inductor. The group of phases then share a common load. This is clear from the mask of the power stage subsystem where two interleaved phases are shown by default. The advantage of the multiphase approach is reduced stress on the devices and reduced ripple currents in the passive components. The higher the number of phases, the lower the ripple current at the output. In this model, the user can compare the results with different phase numbers simply by changing a phase number parameter, rather than having to create different power stages for each configuration. All parameters for the model are defined using the octave language syntax in the model initialization parameters accessible via the simulation menu. In this model, a 12 volt input is stepped down to 5 volts at the output. During the simulation, a parallel load is switched in, having the load resistance. Let's run a quick simulation using the keyboard shortcut Ctrl T to view the current and voltage waveforms, including the transient after the load step. We will come back to these waveforms later. Now, let's look under the subsystem mask. Here you can see a single phase buck converter leg with its two synchronous MOSFETs and an inductor with ESR. In order to replicate this circuit in parallel based on the number of phases, the wire selector component is used in all four terminals. Each wire selector connects its input wire to a variable width output. The input wire is marked with a dot. This means that the circuit between the wire selectors is actually several identical circuits placed in parallel. The connection wires, MOSFETs, and passive components here are all vectorized connections. Further, any measurements taken from within this area are also vectorized, such as the phase inductor current measurement. It's important to note that the wire selector blocks have an output index parameter that is determined by the user input to the mask variable of the subsystem above. Also note that the two wire selectors on the right side are flipped left to right as indicated by the dot icon. Their outputs are consistent with the variable width inner circuit and their single width outputs are connected to the load on the right side of the top level schematic. In the mask initialization commands, a vectorized delay variable is created to properly phase shift the modulation signal for each individual buck converter. This single line of code is found here. Regarding the mask itself, drawing functions are implemented in the Lua language to display an icon showing the appropriate number of half bridges. These dynamic mask commands also allow the icon to change based on a user parameter selection. The mask commands can also show and hide certain parameter fields based on other selections, such as with the dead time duration parameter only being available if the dead time is on. The Plex documentation provides additional details on using Lua command to configure component masks. Now we will take a quick look at the controller implementation. We saw previously that the switch modulation signal is generated by comparing the modulation index provided via feedback control with the output of a triangular wave generator block. The modulation index is generated via a nested controller with an outer voltage loop and an inner current loop. Both are based on discrete PI regulators. The output voltage is measured and compared with a 5 volt set point. For the current feedback, a voltage measurement is made across a current sensing resistor rather than using an ideal ammeter block to account for its associated impedance. Also, the individual phase currents are averaged over one period and then subtracted from the current set point in an effort to reduce the inductor current offset and achieve balancing across the phase inductors. The two switches in each phase are then modulated in a complementary manner and dead time is included to delay the turn on of opposing switches to avoid shoot through. Let's now revisit our current waveforms of the inductors. As we can see if we zoom in, there are three balanced and interleaved current signals here. We can also see that the peak to peak ripple is approximately 60 milliamps when nearing steady state. If we now change the number of phases to 4 and run a new simulation, the ripple is reduced to about 40 milliamps in addition to a reduction in the average current in each phase. This concludes the video on the multiphase synchronous buck converter demo model. 
For more videos and further information, please visit our website at www.plexum.com.